Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we have another discussion with an expert in the space. His name is Jordan Lindsay. He has his own YouTube channel. I would encourage you to go to subscribe to Jordan. He sticks to the data like we do, and, and he has not wavered in his views on the market despite all the twists and turns that we've had. So in an effort to educate everyone, on various models that the price of Bitcoin can follow, we've been bringing a ton of people onto the channel to present very uh, to present a lot of these models. So, Jordan, thank you for coming on. It's a pleasure to have you. Benjamin, thanks for having me. Well, a uh, pleasure to jump into the cryptoverse with all of you. And, and Benjamin, I'm going to start with this chart here, which is bringing everyone's attention to mid cycle. But before I do that, we'll jump back to that. I want to start with where I think everyone needs to begin when they look at Bitcoin. And that's the full price history. All right. Now, Benjamin, uh, there are significant events that take place during Bitcoin. Now, often Bitcoin is looked at through many different vantage points. I love right now the series that you're doing, having many different views uh, presented at this at this critical time here to help each and every one of us uh, best see what's going to happen, transpire in the future, to have different models uh, to, to weigh against each other. And then as price progresses to see which ones are working out and which ones we should focus in on at what particular time. Uh, look, I think that why Bitcoin is discussed and viewed, thought about from many different vantage points, it's not often from that of a perspective of an expert trader and investor. And that's what I would like to add to the conversation here today. Now, I do focus on the four year cycle because every four years, obviously, the miners reward is cut in half. and. This does send a supply shock so far uh, into the market that causes these bull market bays. And, you know, when you're looking at the chart, there are certain things that stand out. For example, these these peaks over here, you can see these peaks. And then you also see after those peaks are these are these cycle lows. And I think that anyone who's looking at this chart is able very easily able to distinguish these 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 points. And then you might even look over here and you say, well, there's there's another peak over there. Right. And you know, if I jump back to what that is, that's that's this area right over here. What was happening over here is this consolidation mid-cycle. You can see that price consolidated after what was that that first wave of a double wave, and then coming out of that that breakout, you could see that then you had this this type of price behavior. It didn't only occur back in 2013. Four years later, in 2017, you see that occurring again over here. You see price mid-cycle consolidating and then breaking out again. And, you know, I've been trying to bring everyone's focus to where I believe we were as we saw price come off, you know, 53% mid-cycle. A lot of people wondering whether or not the cycle peak is in, if we're entering a bear market. I'm just trying to get everyone's focus over here. And we've since broken out now. So the question is, is are we going to see some type of similar price behavior and price, you know, look like that? We're gonna, I'm gonna bring us back over here, but that's what I think is going on over here. I think this is a mid cycle uh, consolidation leading to that peak over there. The next thing that you could see, you know, let me pull up a highlighter is that, you know, from that peak into that low, you see this bear market occur on Bitcoin. And you see that occur from that peak, you know, to that low again. And both of those ended with a capitulation, right? Uh, another similarity is both of these, you know, they lasted approximately 12 months and two weeks. So there, there are similarities, both ending with the capitulation of these bear market phases. And then I think if I, if I could switch the color for you a little bit, let me, let me make that green just to highlight it. And then you can see over here, this is where it actually begins, Ben. This is you know the bull phase, that bull market phase of the four year cycle that we're trying to focus in on. You can see it occurring from the low over there and you can see that you know once price capitulated over to here and what's happening is the having is being front run those happening events that occur every every four years every two hundred and ten thousand blocks right and what we're doing over here what i've been doing because i first bought, bought bitcoin myself you know it was it was like the summer of 2016 and then and then in 2017 as price was breaking above 850 dollars when i really took a position but Price came off 85% from that high and I held all through it. I didn't really understand what was going on. And it was at this time and in this area that I spent during this bear market all the time that I have 20 plus years experience 
in the markets. And I wanted to find out what was going on. And this is when my, my research really led me uh, to, to focusing on the four year cycle. It allowed me, as price was capitulating over here, to, to put out there on Twitter that, hey, listen, I think that the, the bear market's low is in. When there's blood in the streets, now's the time to be looking to buy. And then just a few weeks later saying, okay, what's gonna happen over, over the next two months, we should see price rise towards $8,400. If you remember at that particular time, the fear was extraordinary. People talking about, you know, fifteen hundred dollar Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it was only by using this model, which, which I, you know, I don't know if we should call it the four year cycle or, or what. What I think it is is, is having an understanding of, of the macro of the financial system. I think it's having this the you know. The, the skill set of the technical analysis that, uh, that I've sharpened over the past 20 years, and then having the awareness of what's happening uh, on Bitcoin and, and, the, and the supply shock that's caused by the halving, and then looking at and viewing it in that light, and then putting everything together. I'm gonna talk about what's happening over here in this area with you in just a little bit where we are right now. Before we get there, I just wanna focus a little bit more on, um, on something. Sorry, man. I just lost my train of thought. Could I could I clap so you could edit that out? Yeah, I mean, so I I guess my my um my my questions for you, and I mean, obviously you can continue as well. But um, are so in in terms of say the four year cycle. So the idea, generally speaking, is that it it goes is sort of the the bull market. It, it more or less gets kicked off by the having or being front run slightly going into the having because people are expecting that that supply shock and then that that bull market then extends for you know what like a year and a half or something following the having and and then we come down for a year after that right that, that that's what's been happening to date so far now ben whether whether or not that continues to happen or not nobody knows right but until until i see this this particular behavior uh cease or break you know it's 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 you know it's greatly changed my 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 uh my position in life i was able you know to take half my net worth uh and and, and that's including owned real estate and position into bitcoin front running the having and then uh, I don't want to talk about, you know, in public and live about using any type of leverage and or borrowing against Bitcoin, uh, because I believe that's experts only unless you have uh, the knowledge, uh, unless you have the expertise. I think that could really lead to ruin really quickly. But if you have an understanding of, uh, first of all, and most importantly, when you're wrong, you know, as in a trader, as an investor, you have to be able to manage your risk. Right. So, you know, when knowing when the model breaks, is the, is the greatest advantage of being able to go ahead and then at that point, you know, deleverage, deescalate. That happened, this particular uh, bull market. I wanna talk about that with you as we were trying to line things up and where I was able to know that I was wrong, right? Um, but yeah, I do, I do believe that we're looking at some characteristics that continue to repeat themselves, whether or not it's the length of the bear market or, or the structure of that descending wedge of the bear market or it ending in that capitulation. If we do, Ben, in the, you know, enter into 2022, a bear market that shows similar characteristics, and then we have a capitulation event, which is, it will be clear if you're aware of the, of the possibility of occurring, you know, at that point, it's gonna make sense to begin front running the 2024 habit. Now, it is true that as the minor reward continues to get decreased, going out in the future there will come a time in a place where it no longer will send that supply shock that it does right now but up until now and up until present day that continues to hold um please keep the, the questions coming uh, as right. we're going what i want to do is bring our focus over to real time and you can see that you know you can see the price action coming off this mid-cycle low alignment and how you know that's it's a little bit undeniable it, you might want to pay attention to it in case it continues. That's all I'm offering here is saying, hey, just listen, look how this past behavior is seem seemingly eerily to be repeating itself. And you might want to be aware of it to be able to use that into your analysis. So going forward. sorry, right? could you go? Could you go back to that chart for a minute? Definitely. So so it's um, is it it's is it normalized from the, the dip? Is that where it's normalized from or? 
yeah so what we do is begin aligning let me just bring this up for you so we can see what we, what we begin doing and i know a lot of people look at uh lining the, the chart up from the mid cycle from the low right, right? for example a lot of people begin and I, I think it's a great thing to do after the bear market begin lining these up from the cycle low right and you can line up the charts from the cycle low and you can compare what's going on until you get to the halving as you get to the halving i think that it makes much more sense lining these up you know scaling them from the halving itself and then you're able to see all right you know how is this playing out again and you can see this particular uh this particular 2020 cycle that price was actually almost an average of the two right right and the volatility to the upside to the downside and and now even the consolidation wise and then as price makes that new cycle all-time high i think that the edge that i that we see is is lining them up from that prior cycle all-time high right and then you know over here ben as price was coming off this was like a 30 percent drawdown now when you're doing this in real time it's really difficult uh to know whether you're right or wrong right so we we were looking and and planning on lining these things up from the mid cycle low only at this particular time you think that this is the mid cycle low at this point and you could say oh wow we're, we're lined up you know we, we had that symmetry of that occurring this this dip in the past there's a good chance this is the mid cycle low as price started coming off that 30 percent drawdown and it's also important to be aware up until this point, since the halving, this was only the second 30% drawdown. There were people like Raul Pal out there saying, listen, during the bull market, be prepared for at least a 50% drawdown. I myself was telling people over and over 30% plus. I didn't think we'd go over 40%. We come down 30% over here and start going up. I'm thinking this is the mid cycle low. And I'm telling everyone, okay, in the past from that mid cycle low, let me let me uh, move over and and, and 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 try to actually show you one more from that mid cycle low aligning them up. It's taking approximately 150 days for the previous two cycles to peak. You know, I think it's important to be aware not to say that, hey, listen, this is going to peak in 150 days towards the middle you know, of December. But you should be aware of this just in case we do see this double wave, this one wave, this two wave into this particular point here there was this pullback before that last 35 days and that blow up top if this is occurring again this december you, you're going to want to be aware of that right right um and then so as, as as price was you know pulling back over here i thought that this was the mid cycle low and i'm telling everyone hey be prepared right now we're going to start our count for that double wave into that into that lift off and that cycle peak and price could be peaking somewhere around, you know, September or whatever it might have been. But the, this is where the model really offers an advantage. As price came back down, this is May 13th, May 14th. I said, you know what, that, that's wrong, you know, because otherwise this would be a V, right? The price, you know, behavior is not looking like the model is showing. You know, everyone, you know, stop trading, get neutral. I'm not selling my spot Bitcoin because I'm not going to sell my spot Bitcoin until until the cycle peak. Right. Or and or protect myself, you know, in the futures markets, however, I'm going to do it. Uh, but at this point, if you've been trading and as we had the technical breakout of the bull market, you know, we, we were trading this or, or I myself was trading this uh, at this point, though, it was time that things are unclear. I don't understand what's going on. You know, get neutral. And then as soon as that happened, Ben, I, I, you know, we did have that dump, that, that massive dump, that 53% drawdown. And I threw in this trend line over here. This is where my technical analysis skills really comes in, you know, into play. And I said, things are unclear until we break above that, that what I deem the most important trend line in crypto. And why crypto and not Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin is the rising tide that lifts all boats as it is up until now, you know, all other altcoins continue to track and track closely uh, the four year cycle of Bitcoin. You have, you know, uh, whether it's Cardano, Ethereum outperforming Bitcoin uh, during its bull market phase. And I do project and believe what, as Bitcoin enters its bear market that, uh, you know, once again, we'll see that repeated behavior. By the way, one of the things that helps me understand uh, how Bitcoin is doing during its, its four year cycle, during its, its bull run, is alt season and the two alt seasons that we expected 
pat, looking at these past cycles, it showed me that approximately six months after the halving is when alt season begins, right? It's around the time that Bitcoin's making that new all time high. I believe it attracts speculation. Uh, people believe that, you know, Bitcoin's, you know, overpriced for them. They want to speculate. And this sets off all season. All season has those those two peaks. We've already seen that first peak of all season. And now as Bitcoin is resuming off the most important trend line in crypto, you're seeing that second all season, uh, you know, underway. And that's the advantage of, of looking back at these past cycles. It was having that foresight. It was almost, you know, a year and a half in advance that we would be looking approximately six months after that Bitcoin halving for that first all season to begin. And, and that occurred right on time. Now, I was able, as price, you know, broke the model, I guess you could say, or it was not lining up to the model, uh, was able to say, all right, it's, it's, it's time to get neutral and then wait for this to break, right? And then, you know, after and watching the, you know, the descending wedge that formed here, the breakout, talking about what price should look like coming out of that, how it, the next opportunity for the bears to attack would be into that most important trend line in crypto. You saw them first be able to hold and then the bulls, you know, took a second run in it and broke it. Uh, at this point, once that low is in, once price broke the most important trend line in crypto, it was fair to say that I believe that the mid cycle low is in, right? I don't know for sure. And if price does come back down below this, this trend line, and then, you know, if price, first of all, comes below this trend line, there's a strong possibility that that low is not in. And what that means going forward or how the cycle is going to look, I don't know, but I can no longer line these up from the mid cycle. And right now they are lined up from the mid cycle. Let me go ahead and do that. And that's going to change, Ben, as we get towards this area over here, which we deem liftoff, assuming that that low is in and if price has some type of similar behavior, I don't know if price, you know, trades below the 2016, if it trades below above it or even above the 2013 bull market over here in that lighter green. But if price winds up, you know, somewhere in November towards this area, we'll then line up these cycles no longer from the mid cycle low. We'll line them up from this lift off, focusing on over here, the you know, approximately the last 35 days of the cycle. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. So I have a couple of questions for you. Um, the first question being, if we were to come back down below the line, the dash line yeah. that you have drawn, um, would you speculate that there's if we go back down below it would you speculate that that means that the mid-cycle dip is just a little bit later than than perhaps um what we saw or would you speculate that 64k was the top okay i mean both great questions uh i would not speculate that 64k was the top only because the cycle has never peaked let's line them up from uh you like to line them up from the cycle low or, or people like to line them up from the cycle low Let's look at it like that and start there. And well, that's not gonna work then, I'm sorry about that. Let me start with the halving event. Uh, a Bitcoin bull market run has never lasted. The top, you could see that if this was the top 64 and a half, 64,000, it has never peaked that early. Mm -hmm. Now, it, why it's possible that that was the top, I would, I would, I would give that a very low probability. When I say low probability, I'm talking about under 5% chance. If we were to break down over here below that most important trend line in crypto, which has not happened in the past, if you looked at over here, you know, in the in the prior two cycles that we're, we're observing, you could see that price never, sorry, I wanted to clear that up for you. So basically, yeah, like it hasn't, hasn't broken it before. It would um, be a new price behavior right. if price were to break outside of that most important trend line in crypto, that mid cycle consolidation, and then come back below it and take out that low. If that's happening at that point, uh, you know, this model that I'm viewing and using as an edge is no longer valid. I, I'm not gonna say, okay, at that, and will we at that point look for whatever that mid cycle low is and line them up? I don't think so, Ben, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. And if it did, I would say, well, you know, why we've seen certain anomalies happen throughout the course of uh, uh, of, of Bitcoin and its, and, its, and its progress. Some of those anomalies are over here during the dollar liquidity crisis, right? Price wouldn't have had this 63% this drawdown over here if that didn't happen. Was this an anomaly, this double wave that occurred back in 2013? I don't know. 
I do view perhaps that the reason that this particular cycle was shorter could have been because of the ASICs being brought online and that causing those 210,000 blocks to be processed quicker. It does seem to me that the cycle has kind of rounded out at about 1,400 days. Uh, are these things anomalies? Would it be an anomaly if price broke down You know, after breaking out? I think so. That's not my base case whatsoever. And if that were to occur, you know, I, I, I don't think that this model going forward would be something that you'd want to lean into or, or, or be considering. But as of right now, you know, and, and, and until that happens, unless that happens, I do think that it makes a lot of sense to pay attention uh, to what this model is offering. So what, you know, with the idea that the peak could be in 2021, which of course, I mean, it's always a possibility, especially given the fact that, you know, Bitcoin is already up, what, 60 or 70% from the, the mid-cycle dip, as you call it, back at, at 29K. Um, what should people be on the lookout for uh, as we go through, say, you know, September, October, November, December? Because we only have, you know, about four, four months or so after August left. Um, what what would we want to be looking out for? Like what what sort of prices do we need to be seeing for it to be staying on track with these models? Um, and, and what would give people the confidence in December to say, all right, like this has got to be it. Like we can't keep going up like this forever. Yeah. So I think I think that one of the main takeaways is that people should have the option if we are. And by the way, the, the you know, part of part of the four year cycle, right? You're dealing with coded monetary supply with human psychology and, and that behavior repeating itself over and over again. If we were to see Ben price, you know, come November, start rising at this type of trajectory, the emotions are going to be real uh, and you're going to see massive FOMO in, in the space. And unless you have, uh, let's say, the awareness going into it of what could be happening, it, it helps you it helps you stay grounded so that you have the ability if you believe well the blow off tops happening again that means there's a good chance that we might be looking at perhaps a bear market and even an 85 percent drawdown i know earlier in cycle people uh you know were commenting that well the institutions are here we're no longer going to see any type of you know drawdowns maybe they'll be capped at 60 percent but we saw mid cycle a 53 percent drawdown and i think that was kind of you know, a warning to a lot of participants out there that, hey, no, listen, you know, Bit Bit Bitcoin remains volatile, right? And when people talk about models breaking, generally they're spe they're talking about models breaking to the upside, right? So Bitcoin's very volatile to the upside. The volatility we've seen this cycle is very much, you know, a combination of the previous two cycles. You know, it's a little more volatile to the upside and downside, and even sideways now than the, than the last cycle, 2016, right? And the, and this kind of leads us to talk about what our expected returns are going are, are going forward or what's happening this cycle that's causing us not to see diminishing returns. When I did the math front running this cycle, I actually used like $160,000 as my potential profit target for this bull run. Bull run. So I put like $140,000 as reach. For me and all the work that I planned out ahead of time, that will be me achieving all my goals. Now, I'm not going to sell at $140,000 if price reaches that. I'm going to like lean into price action and make sure that I'm able to take, you know, to get as much as I'm able out of there. And at the top, people should have the awareness and, and the ability to make a decision whether or not they continue want to hold their Bitcoin understanding that could potentially be an 85% drawdown, whether they want to hedge themselves, protect themselves. It's very useful. Now, if, if this is the mid cycle low, Ben, and that come December, you know, price has not seen this type of behavior where you have that blow off top and is actually underperforming the last cycle. At that point, this model is no longer useful either. At this point, this model is not giving you any type of edge showing you that expected price behavior. As far as what's going to happen, I, I think because of, you know, of the dollar liquidity crisis right before the halving, and the Fed's reaction and the central bank's reaction, we're seeing between the ECB and the Federal Reserve $250 billion of security purchases a month. The Fed expanded their balance sheet by $4 trillion. There, it's an uber easy monetary environment. And I think that's causing this cycle you know, to outperform what I expected it was going to be. 
you know, it makes sense. Now, the market right now is going to be looking at what the Fed is doing over the summer. In just 10 days, they meet at Jackson Hole, whether or not they're going to be setting up a possible taper, when that taper would be. I'm always looking at the Federal Reserve and, and the central banking system as the greatest risk to Bitcoin, right? Now, if you're betting on Bitcoin, what you're actually betting on is that they're going to keep, you know, the music playing as long as possible. If anything breaks in the system, as we saw in that last March 2020, they're going to act big and they're going to act quick to keep this going, you know, as long as possible until they're able to make whatever adjustment, whether that's launching uh, the central bank digital currencies and, and just or, or having like a new Bretton Woods type agreement. However, the system is is basically coming to an end as we know it. And it's going to there's going to be a new system in, in, in the future between now and then, you know, it's it's my thesis. It's my it's my belief. They're going to do whatever it takes to keep this going. And if you believe that, then you then you want to lean into and be betting on Bitcoin. Right. Um, I digress. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but I want to move forward over to here, though, with you and, and focus on this area of 2024 when it's it's estimated we should have 1 billion crypto users right and this is where we are right now 2021 we could see and i i talked about early in 2019 that you have to look at this also as as a technology and a technology adoption curve right i do believe as we get towards the top of this uh, uh of this adoption phase that you're going to see bitcoin showing diminishing returns I believe around this point also is when we're going to see uh, that that ha that supply shock caused by the having of the miner miners reward actually diminishing in effect. But what I'm looking at is this current bull market run over here, and this is what I'm focused in on. And and I do believe if we see things play out as as we've been seeing, and we do see a cycle peak and a bear market. I believe it's going to give all of us an opportunity to front run the 2024 having event, right? And then I do believe that will cause a supply shock as growth is still really exponential, you know, up until, you know, what happens between 2024, 2028, the latter part of 2028, if we're going to see some type of like last cycle, I think that this is a, a, a spot that it might occur, right? Does that make sense to you, Ben? Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. I mean, basically, I guess your speculation is that as we continue to move out further and further, the the cycles are, are not going to be quite as obvious. Is that is that sort of the idea? Like the, the having will have a lower, a less effect in the future um, than it does today. But with that said, there's still time to to sort of follow that cycle for at least one more cycle, if not maybe a second one after this. Yeah, you know, well, you know, at the point where miners are making more money from their fees rather than, uh, you know, confirming and discovering new blocks at that that point, I do believe what Bitcoin looks like. And and I do believe that my personal belief, it will be some type of log regression uh, trend that we that we're that we're following, whether or not it's more supply and demand or what I don't know, but it's too far in advance for me to be focusing on right now. But what I'm trying to focus on is this current bull market, which I do believe all these dynamics are still in play, right? We'll know soon enough. Like you said, it's it's a very short amount of time. By the way, let me let me come back to this chart in a moment, which will also offer us a nice edge. You know, you asked what price should look like from this point up until the end of the year. And, you know, it should look like this double wave starting at the bottom, right? Wave one, wave two up until this you know this area we deem lift off and to that blow off top if you do not see assuming that low is in and if you do not see any type of similar behavior now as far as where price should be you know mid-september or into october i have no idea nor am i trying to time it like that i do believe once price that has broken that most important trend line in crypto between you know the time it takes for price to reach that new all-time high that that it won't be too long now i'm not going to tell you whether that's going to happen in september or october or anything like that right uh when do you know the model's wrong it's easy to know when the model's wrong we talked about if price were to come back below that most important trend line in crypto and take out that low right at that point this is not lining up correctly anymore and and whatever's happening this is not giving you the edge that you need 
but you could see price coming out of that mid cycle low and how we aligned it because we we were waiting for that low to be in for quite a while right and you could see this whole time we're waiting for the, that low to be put in and then watching the price action coming off that low look it happened as we were looking for it to happen it would make sense to continue paying attention to what happens over these next you know 120 days or so to see whether or not we do put in that that cycle peak and if we do i think it would make sense to lean into the belief or the possibility that we could be entering a bear market and that bear market might have a lot of the similar characteristics of the past bear markets that we've saw uh at the end of the day uh you're leaning into the macro right you're leaning into the ta you know uh, and then you're, you're following those rough broad strokes of that of the four-year cycle and these price patterns that we've seen repeating themselves and using that as an opportunity to kind of lean into and front run uh potential future price here's a question for you that i think could probably help people in terms of you know trying to figure out you know what where, where the next low is going to be like where could the next bear market bottom be so my question for you is do you okay. think do you think the next bear market the lows of the next bear market like and I, and I mean like you know if it's going down for a year or something right let's say let's say it plays out we have a, a peak in 2021 and then going into 2022 the market starts to turn over and we head down for a year what do you think do you think that the future bear market low is higher than the current price or what do you think the future bear market lows will be within like a range or something yeah, I think that's such an important question, because if you have an idea of, of where the coming bear market low is, it gives you a huge advantage, right? Um, so listen, this is the way that I view it or look at it. Uh, if you're asking me where I think the coming bear market low is going to be, I think it's going to be somewhere around $64,000. Why I say that is because if you go back to that last, uh, you know, that mid cycle shakeout that occurred, that was also in July 2017. Oh, here we go, July 2017. This was the mid-cycle shakeout. What was the most important trend line in crypto at the time? And you could see, of just following where my mouse is using the high of that and then come to the right, the bear market you know, came into that, that, that resistance and it held that support. And you could do that again over here. Again, this was the mid-cycle, that, that mid-cycle consolidation. And you could use the top of that area and then you come over to the right and that's where that last bear market low was. So, yeah, I do think that this mid-cycle consolidation is one of the important events that occurs in Bitcoin's cycle. Whether you want to call it the four-year cycle or however you want to label it doesn't really matter. But you can see in the past that yeah, that has occurred. So am I going to be looking for that to occur? Yeah, until it, no, until it breaks, I'm going to look for the model to hold. You know, it's same thing in investing. I don't I don't look to call tops and I don't look to call bottoms, right? I'm looking for the sweet spot of the trade where the momentum is, which was why until the most important trend line in crypto broke over here, it didn't make sense for anyone to be trading. I, I mean, listen, I only believe uh, in buying Bitcoin during its bull market phase. I'm not going to sell Bitcoin in a, in a bull market. But when you don't have momentum and you have structural breakdown occurring, it's, it's just be out of the market. Just wait until you see uh, something present itself where you're seeing things lining up again. I think that, that, that I think that that's why I'm leaning into 64,000 being the coming bear market low, right? Now, if you were to do something like, well, okay, then, you know, if you're gonna have an 85% drawdown, you know, so what, what are you looking at? And, and you could project the potential price top. You, you could do that and you could get an idea of what the top is gonna be. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm trying to like, Instead of trying to put price targets out there, I'm focusing on just that I want to see this double wave. We're in the midst of wave one, right? And yeah, that should peak out sometime towards the beginning to, to in September. We should see that, that peak of wave one, right? And then I'm going to be looking for a second wave, right? And if that's occurring and then it doesn't need to be between the previous two cycles, it could be underperforming 2016. It could be overperforming 2013. But as long as we're in this range and we're making that new all time high, right, by, by October, we're making a new, I'm going to say, OK, I want to continue watching what's going on here. I will line these up again as we get towards this area and I'm going to try to focus in on the top. Let me show you also the advantage of some of a following price action as we get towards that top to show you what a potential exit could look like. 
I'm going to line these up again from uh, where we are right now, mid cycle. And then, you know, you could say that, you know what, if we saw Ben, if we're watching together and we see that price is, is starting late November, start rising up and it's going parabolic and people saw the price rise off that mid cycle low and what they, they thought that price is coming off really aggressive and it, and it is, but it's not compared to what price would be doing in this range, right? When you talk about like melting people faces off or ripping fa people's faces off, it's it's gonna it's it's vertical price action, right? So you want to have the awareness ahead of time. Look what happened in these past cycles. You saw this four step into the peak. You saw price come down one, two, three, and then four is the sell. Four is the sell. It happened over here. One, two, three, four. So as we're going vertical, if I saw a similar price action develop where that that four step, for sure I'm selling right there and into that fourth move you know and it's having ahead of time or working out these potential uh different path trajectories that price might take in real time as the emotions are are real it gives you the edge of, of having that that preparation to lean into okay so i mean it, it gives people a general idea of of what to expect i think like i mean you're not you're clearly not saying we have to go above the lines or whatever specifically but if we're if we're generally tracking that then what's happening now is not you know unexpected in the sense that it's it's coming off really really strong it's just coming off as it always has is the idea and if that's yeah. true and it continues tracking the way it has in the past then what's happening now is still not even that impressive compared to what we would see or we would expect to see closer to the end of the cycle um, and, and that's what we're watch, looking at and that's what we're watching. And this has all been developed in real time. And what I say by that is, you know, we, we were first using the having and, and lining the cycles up off of the having and, and, and working this out until price made that new cycle all time high, the all time high from the previous cycle, 19,400. And then from then on, we started lining price up from, you know, of these cycles from that particular uh, uh, event, right? right? And then as price was coming towards what in April, I just said, hey, everyone watch out. You know, in the past, there's like a shakeout that occurs during this mid cycle. I, we had no idea what it was going to look like in real time, but we knew to be expecting a shakeout. And like I said, as, as price came off 30%, I thought this was the shakeout. And then price comes off. I thought this event right here was this event occurring right here, right now. And then as price came off, I said, well, you know what? I'm wrong that's that's not right at this point you know everyone get neutral we're going to wait for that low to be put in but so if that were to happen again ben then this is abandoned this is not this is not correct but if we see price from where we are right now and then it puts in a a, a higher low right and comes off and makes new all time well at this point this to me seems to be giving me the most accurate potential path for bitcoin coming into, you know, it's bull market cycle peak, right? Is that clear for you? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, also, I mean, it looks like if it if it were to put in a higher low in September, actually, September is known for not being the best month anyways. Um, so right. it would there it would be funny if it if it coincided with I mean, I know part of the reason it's not it hasn't been great is because well, all these people speculate on on the effect of the miners and whatnot in China and the rainy season. This year, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know exactly how that's going to play out. But I mean, yeah, I think this is a, an interesting model to watch. Like, you know, are we right now we're in a crazy move, right? I mean, well, relatively speaking, compared to what was going on during the summer. And, you know, the question is, is whenever we do get a nice little pullback, is it a higher low, right? Is it is it higher or are we breaking that and going back down? And if it's higher low and we can keep tracking this model, then it seems like it would be a model that we would want to use as we as we go into October, November, and December um, and and try to try to time the market as best as we can, I guess. Because, uh, I mean, I guess it's really hard to, to predict it down to the day, of course. Um, but, yeah. it, I mean, if it, if it gives you a, a vague idea of, of when things are occurring, it, it sort of tells you, okay, the momentum is going to be changing sometime soon. This is the time to figure out, you know, what you're going to do about it. <laughs> Um, yeah, having the awareness of looking for when that, of looking for when that, um, you know, this is, I, I focus on the eight hour time frame, and you could see as price, you know, we're, Ben, 
really good at really getting uh, intricate and accurate on what's going on in the, in the short term, but at the same time, always try and, uh, to, to change my pri time preference and not keeping it high, right? So as price, you know, took that first repair, I call it over here, this was when we said, you know, after like get neutral, hey, listen, this is the first opportunity that Bitcoin actually might be putting in a low. We don't know if it's going to happen or not. But once this developed, once this descending wedge developed, it was very clear. Watch if we break out here to the upside, we had a breakout or retest. But the next potential price target was the most important trend line in crypto. And, you know, that's exactly what happened. And then from there, we said, well, Listen, this is the, the opportunity if you're bearish on Bitcoin, where you would put on a defense. I know a lot of retail started selling Bitcoin down over here, thinking they could accumulate more Bitcoin, you know, buying and selling Bitcoin. That's usually not the way to go about it. The bears did put up a little bit of a, you know, a battle over here. And then you saw the bulls go ahead and lean in and took out the most important trend line in crypto. So we, we try to get really accurate, but at the same time, it's to everyone's advantage to be using a lower time preference, right? By the way, this this trend line over here, let me get off this and, and come to candles. This yellow trend line over here, Ben, as long as that's holding, right? Uh, there's The buyers are in control and strongly. There's, there's no chance that we're gonna break down and then potentially take out that most important trend line in crypto. Now the Fed is meeting, would send some type of shock into the markets if they talk about tapering harder and quicker than, than the market's expecting. And that could send the price of Bitcoin and cause another anomaly on Bitcoin. It could send us back down towards that low over there. And then maybe you want to go ahead and lean into someone who's been talking about Bitcoin, perhaps, you know, trading down towards $20,000 or something like that. In my opinion, that would be the, the leading model to lean into right now everything that's occurring right now kind of is, is is lining up that past price behavior we're seeing that bullish breakout mid-cycle right since price is, is broken out over here the red line it should be green now i could update it and showing you prices above it and uh you want to be following what you deem to be the most accurate uh model going forward well hey jordan i you know it's been great having you here presenting these models um do you have any I feel like I feel like you know by having you on, people at least you know they have an expectation of of you know what or what should they be looking for uh, as we as we continue on for the next several months. Like what could they be looking for to try to identify if if this opportunity will present itself in December? So I do thank you for coming on and, and sharing your models. Is there any any last thoughts or any any final things you would like to share uh, before we go? Yeah, you know. I, I think it's really important uh, just to help to protect everyone, right? This is, you know, speculating in the markets uh, is, is about controlling your risk. It's about managing your risk. People are always focused on what they could potentially make. Uh, and they often go into a, an investment without really putting the work in. But, you know, the work is not actually placing that buy order or anything like that. It's calculating ahead of time you know, how much you're willing to lose, uh, you know, depending on how much you're willing to lose, where you think that your stop loss should be, and then managing your position size around that. I think that uh, it's, it's not often talked about uh, the dangers that people who do not approach this in, let's say, uh, a calculated, thoughtful way. Um, people are gonna lose money then between this point here, and if this plays out exactly, the cycle peak that we see in late in 2021, a lot of people are going to be reckless and lose a lot of money, even though the price of Bitcoin over here should be rising and rising, uh, you know, uh, drastically, let's say. And into that cycle peak, you'll still have people following the fear of missing out and buying over here and buying the top. So I just want everyone to have uh, the awareness and the respect for the markets that's necessary to go ahead and actually and actually conquer them. I think those are wise words, um, and you know everyone can. I think everyone can relate to that. You know, like you you don't want to be losing money, but if you're losing money in a bull market, you're doing something very wrong. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, so Jordan, it was it was a pleasure to have you on the show. If you guys are not subscribed to Jordan, he has a a YouTube page, a YouTube channel. I would encourage you go ahead and go subscribe to him. He's just shy of a hundred thousand subscribers. So let's help him reach that milestone. Uh, we will, I'm sure, if if things play out. 
uh, like these, like this model is showing, you know, we're gonna wanna, we're gonna wanna follow this. So Jordan, I'm sure we'll have you back on um, later on. And uh, again, thanks for coming on the show, presenting your thoughts, and I will speak to you again very, very soon. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me, and thanks for all the work you do for, for the community overall. Really appreciate you. Thanks. All right, bye, guys.